one. Hey, Winnie, good to see you again. Um, it was a great pleasure having you at Sapphire at our showcase, in a real showcase, in a physical showcase at Sapphire in Orlando. And today, it's a great honor and a pleasure for me to also present you the digital work version of our Farm to Consume showcase, where we really show a whole food supply chain um, in the example of ice cream production, touching all the multiple industries, um, which is an important topic, I think, which also came up now multiple times in uh, um, the discussion of blurring industry lines and also related to a book um, uh, you wrote together with Peter Meyer. Um, uh, I think it's a great next step of how we can showcase to customers the you value know, of this. You know, Andre, you know, Andre, this is it's phenomenal. I saw what you did at Sapphire last year with the okay. with the fashion industry and this one with agribusiness. You know, the, yeah. the fact that you can do these and move these from country to country and yeah. That without a hiccup, you're 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 redefining the whole pop up, uh, show, show floor, and yeah. it, it, it's it's very impressive. So I'm looking forward to this. No, that's great. Uh, that's great. And actually, again, um, uh, I think this year it even is more impressive as we touch multiple industries which are involved in really managing this whole supply chain of ice cream production, really from the farming, um, getting all the ingredients. Um, to the consumer at the end, uh, consuming the ice cream at the right temperature uh, with the right taste and all the things which are needed to create a unique experience um, for consumer good products companies for their customers. So as you see today, um, uh, this is the digital twin of our physical showcase, which we make available to everybody who is interested in. So you can access um, via sap.com. And you can really see already an overview the multiple like industry areas or, or areas which are needed to create a seamless journey and also a more sustainable, more pro profitable ice cream production at the end for these companies. So we always start okay. with farming. Andre, I have I have one question. How do you get people ice cream with this uh, digital twin? You need to make a QR <laughs> code so they can. <laughs> That's actually a very good question. And we even thought about this. I mean, it was easy on the physical event. And by the way, we so not we sold, we gave out or handed out more than 25,000 ice creams um, uh, in the Sapphire event. So it was a huge success um, for uh, the ice cream company. Um, yes, unfortunately, we are not able to hand out ice creams at the end of the digital showcase. However, it would be possible. We can easily connect it to our e-commerce store and then ship it. Um, however, you also know, I mean, maybe ice cream is not the best example as a product also to do online delivery. Um, uh, as then uh, maybe the, the melting point um, uh, is uh, I'm, beyond I'm, I'm, best. I'm just kidding, Andre. Come on, I'm, 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 walk us through the detail. I'm looking for one. Hey, Winnie, what I want to do today, I want to give you two things. First of all, I want to show you a short four minute video to really show the end to end flow for our farm to consume showcase. And then I want to guide you through the digital app to the digital showcase and do a double click into each section from farm to source to make to deliver to consume an emission control center to really how to show you the details on every section hello welcome to sapphire orlando and to our main showcase where we actually show the superpower of sap how we can support the whole food supply and what we're doing here is we created a farm to consume showcase where we show the end-to-end -end connection between the different industry from farming to sourcing, making, consuming, delivering, like all the process steps from really like an end-to-end -end food supply. And actually our example in Orlando, because it's so hot outside, we talk about ice cream. And to start a process, the best thing is going ordering the ice cream in our check-in terminal where we can individualize ice cream and order it for our consumers. Come on. Here, everybody could scan the batch and could order the ice cream according to the specific consumer needs. And then we start a process. And as we start a process in ice cream production, everything starts with the ingredients. So let us go to the farming area. 
the whole ice cream supply chains start with farming, start with blending the ingredients. And we at SAP have the unique opportunity to help farmers to make this process more sustainable and more efficient. So actually, with intelligent agriculture, but also with the connect to the edge devices like this farm robot, we can help farmers to use weather data, to do soil moisture, to reduce watering of the plants, to really start this process more efficiently and make the customers and the farmers more successful. Now we are in sourcing. And of course, it's not only about ingredients or sourcing ingredients accordingly, it's also about packaging, labeling. With the power of the SAP Business Network and the combination of SAP Ariba, the companies can really source according to their targets, according to their needs. So we can connect all the data from multiple suppliers all over the world to make the supply chain more resilient, but also more sustainable. Now we are in the make process. So what we have here is a real ice cream machine line which shows that we need to be able to react to demand signals, to maybe change the production process, to maybe change the procedure based on new preferences of our consumers. So combining the intelligent business planning of SAP with the digital manufacturing cloud allows us and allows our customers to really react and change the production process based on customer demand. After making the ice cream, it's all about delivery. In-time delivery, stock management, warehouse management, super important that we also connect it to our wholesale distributors. So there is also all about automation. With SAP, we help to automate the whole delivery process. It's really like from packaging to make the warehouse management, to use robotics, automate warehouses, and ship it on time to the consumers based on their demand. So now we are in the consumer area. And in the consumer area, it's all about the consumers. And whatever we saw across the whole supply chain is that we can deliver the consumer demand in time and create a transparency across the whole product supply chain. So we can provide all the data and transparency of the product for the consumers in this area. Now you really saw that SAP has the power to create this end-to-end -end value chain, combining all the industries and at the end deliver the consumer demand with the best experience they can have. That um, maybe we start already directly in the farming area, because in ice cream everything starts with the ingredients. And I think farming or agriculture um, is a huge topic. And as in every, um, uh, so to say, process step, we also can here go very deep in the different kind of processes where we support customers or partners together with partners um, to do a more sustainable, but also more profitable farming. And I mean, farming, um, it's a big topic. Think about water consumption, um, think about all the like um, uh, difficulties in getting the right skilled workers to also improve or use um, new technology um, for farming. Um, uh, you have you need to handle seasonal workers, you need to handle contingent workforce, um, you need to retrain people. So there's also a lot about um, HR, but definitely also about combining edge technology like our farm bot. And I go to the showcase, you can always go to the um, specific showcase. We also um, uh, go more in details about the solutions, the underlying solution of SAP, but also partners and how we can really improve this process. And if you go down, um, uh, I mean, I just scroll a bit through um, uh, what we are doing here in farming is exactly what I just mentioned. I mean, a key thing for SAP is really using or make use of edge technology, taking the data manage the data and bring it together with the semantical data we already have and the industry knowledge we have in our business application to really improve the processes for agriculture. And in this example, we did a lot of uh, with farm bots. So we really um, uh, do the, have soil sensors who are measuring really the soil moisture um, uh, and then have a more a accurate, um, accurate uh, watering um, for the farming, for the plants that we also can react better um, to environmental 
uh, circumstances. So if there is um, less rain or maybe um, you need to change maybe the plant to get more outcome, um, we can all manage this in our intelligent agriculture solution. And like this is how the way you can really experience how this is working um, in the application itself um, in the digital showcase. So it's not only physically available, you can really uh, walk through, you can read through what's happening with the different kind of product steps. And then um, you can always go back um, uh, to your to the main showcase. You also see the customer references. As one example, we do a big co-innovation there with Cargill. Um, we work together also with um, uh, chemical uh, customers to really improve the sustainability index of the whole farming, but also um, uh, with big pharma companies and for sure the consumer good products companies. When we go to the next step, I think this is an important one in the sourcing, um, which are also rely to their suppliers that their farmers doing everything more sustainable and then can also get the data at the end to do their sustainability reporting. And all of this, um, uh, we combine always in the showcase, as said, you can go deep in a very easy, easy use case example. Um, uh, you dig into like more related um, uh, strategic priorities for the specific industry. You see customer references where you can go deep also. Um, as one example, you see really, okay, what are we doing? Uh, in a small video together with Cargill in the agriculture, but you also see the different kind of solutions reflected um, in this specific use case. And there you also see some kind of architectural um, blueprint, um, uh, which kind of products we are using, which kind of partner solutions we are uh, working together, and also which kind of data uh, we're gathering really to improve the processes. And at the end, you can even go to the, directly to the product via sap.com and the substore. So this is all about so like under, one specific- Under area. the farm bots, you had farm bots, you had this thing that was moving back and forth. Yeah. Was, well, that was monitoring for what? Temperature, moisture, what, what was it picking up? <laughs> Yes, exactly. It was temperature, so it was moisture, but it's also doing then the watering accordingly. It's not only like measuring it, so it's also doing then the watering, um, it's doing the pesticide spraying or whatever is needed um, to keep the plant alive and to have a better harvest tree at the end um, uh, with like more outcome and less um, negative envi environmental impact um, uh, which we want to create. So again, it's all about using this machine and there are different kind of ways we need like it's not only like this robot which is also more like in vertical farming or closed rooms you can use it already um we have the same kind of capabilities in connecting to big farming machines yeah like uh, trucks on the field on the plants um uh, and and all these things so we can also connect to the same kind of whatever a farmer is using to optimize uh, the whole process, we can connect um, via our PTP capabilities to the edge devices, which uses then the data to do the farming accordingly. Okay. Yes, and I mean, as, as not only the ingredients are super important for ice cream, um, and as we have been now in farming, I want to go to the next step, um, uh, which is a super important one, um, to the sourcing area. and. Um, in the sourcing area, I think it's really all about the flexibility, but also the transparency um, about the whole supplier network we can connect to, uh, to make data-driven decisions. And especially um, with all the circumstances currently, yeah, geopolitical um, uh, topics or also sustainability topics, all about supply chain resiliency, but also optimize um, the whole sourcing process itself for customers. Um, it's a big topic by connecting multiple data points um, across the whole supply chain. And for ice cream, it's not only the ingredients you need to get from the farmers at the right quality and, and in the right time to produce it. It's also about the packaging, the labeling. So all of these things coming together um, and overall leads then to a more profitable but also sustainable um, uh, ice cream which are shipped to the customers. And when we go to the sourcing showcase, I think it really um, shows you in a very impressive way which kind of 
um, uh, different kind of pillars we take into um, uh, as into our sourcing process and into our selection process when we talk about the optimized ice cream production. So um, we see here as one example, like all of the base ingredients we have in our ice cream. Um, so the flavors we add to the ice cream, but also as said, um, the packaging, like either cups or big um, uh, cartonage or uh, labeling or packaging. So all of this, um, we can show, and then we can all show also all the components um, and the impact either on emissions or on ethical working conditions or on the supplier performance from a financial point of view. Um, so we can really show all the impact in the specific product. And we can even go, so I show it on a larger screen, um, or we can even go deep um, into the supplier selection. So in our case, we said, okay, maybe we need to change the, the packaging um, uh, as we need to produce a different kind of um, ice cream. And so we can easily see here in the next screen, okay, which um, kind of alternative, alternatives are automatically provided via AI um, to the respective procurement and sourcing organization um, with all the key pillars and the key topics we need to in take into consideration. So same same uh, schema like in the uh, um, uh, agriculture. So you can scroll to, you can do the selection, uh, new alternative supplier, you see the impact on the financials, you see the impact um, on the sustainability score. Um, and then you see also um, to optimize, I would say, production, um, uh, you need to run to do a more sustainable packaging and a more um, uh, yeah, profitable packaging for your new ice cream at the end, based on all the data we get okay, out I of learned, the vanilla. I learned more about vanilla, the bean, vanilla <laughs> bean, from uh, yes. than I have yes. anywhere else. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, and that's also a point here. I did a packaging example. However, um, as you have seen also in the Sapphire keynote from uh, uh, Julia White and, and Christian, um, uh, like the ingredients are another um, important topic. And there we talked about Madagascar vanilla. And I think um, this was a good example um, to really showcase the complexity if there is like anything is breaking in the whole supply chain. And then if you have the capabilities to connect to a broad supplier network, I think Unilever have like more than 30,000 suppliers in the network, where you can even um, maybe connect based on the, um, yeah, on the um, uh, bookmarks or on the check marks you add to your system, what kind of, um, uh, specific requirements a supplier needs to fulfill to become part of this network, you can easily switch maybe the supplier because the demand is increasing in a specific country um, and you maybe need to restock the ingredients that you can really deliver at the end on the consumer demand and the consumer needs um, at the right quality. And, and that's the vanilla ice cream example, same I showed here with the cups. So you get some alternatives from the system um, uh, based as said um, on the thresholds you set in the system, which you expect from your suppliers. Um, uh, in this case, it was all about the quality and then also um, about the sustainability index. And then you can easily choose um, uh, maybe a different supplier who could deliver the same kind of um, ingredient um, uh, at the same kind of quality you expect to really produce the, the ice cream in time for the demand and the customer. And, and this also brings me really to the next point because um, uh, there's the next logical connect. It's not then that you get the Madagascar vanilla as one example or the rice cups um, at the quality you need. It's also that you have the um, uh, yeah, capacity to produce it in time and to also or maybe change the receipt management in the ERP um, to produce the ice cream with a different kind of ingredient at the same quality. And, and then the connection, the ne next logical data connect between the one process, um, uh, taking all this in consideration and but then also producing this stuff um, uh, shows the complexity and in, in really then delivery at, at, at 
Yeah, manage the delivery at highest uh, quality, but also according to the demand. And so let, let us jump to the make process, because I think this is also but, really important. One, one other thing in the sourcing process is Anya, who leads your agribusiness uh, ID, yeah. had, had talked to me about all the contracts, the complex commodity trading in contracts and all that. So that also comes into the procurement sourcing side. Absolutely. Yeah. So like the contracts, also category management, very important topic for procurement organizations. Um, uh, but the contracts, you, indeed, that's totally right. I mean, think about as said, I mean, you have a supplier network of 30 or 50,000 uh, suppliers, like having all the contract management aligned between that, that you also have it accordingly to your compliance guidance or whatever. Um, huge topic. Again, as broader, this like supplier network is spreading and um, you need to take different kind of maybe also farmers which are bonded um, under one supplier into consideration that this um, also is like according to your guidance and or contract guidance um, from a company perspective, very complex topic. And, um, uh, but also um, uh, I think very impressive when you come at the end to the control piece, um, uh, when you at the end also do the, uh, account uh, payable, account receivable, so all the, the financial management at the end um, of, of um, uh, the procurement organization and all the other um, uh, process steps, um, uh, super important. Um, but let me, let me jump into May, because I think um, uh, May is super critical. So the whole production process, I think, which is a core process of SAP. Um, uh, so either, and we are talking here about ice cream, but you can also apply it to any other process manufacturer um, in the world. So there are similar process steps, either you produce a set ice cream or you produce any chemical product or liquid or whatever, um, you have the same kind of, okay, you need to schedule the high, the, the rye, I would say manufacturing steps, you need to manage uh, demand, you need to manage, okay, when other uh, ingredients coming in, um, where you need to maybe change the receipt management of a specific prod product when there are time slots to produce it then and in time and to ship it at the right quality. The whole quality process across um, uh, the whole manufacturing process, also a very important step. And uh, I think this picture here um, shows it very good, like also how many products um, uh, we have available also at SAP. I mean, it sounds right complex, but I mean, as said, manufacturing processes I think as one of the most, um, yeah, most complex processes to really run it at scale. And I think this, this broad portfolio also, especially about the integrated business planning, about um, a digital manufacturing cloud, um, shows how we can manage this um, for our customers. And also there, again, I think um, uh, it's it's a very nice example how we can here reprioritize customer orders and manage production according to different kind of demand signals, which we take into consideration. And uh, you see it here. Um, uh, in this example, we see different consumer trends um, in different regions. So it, um, uh, the flavors are changing. And we, according to the demand signals, we also see, okay, um, uh, where are we maybe low in stock um, uh, and where we need to maybe change the production or increase the production um, to manage the demand accordingly. And um, as said, um, uh, having this integrated um, uh, between IPP and the digital manufacturing cloud um, uh, is, a, is a huge benefit for our customers um, to manage this at scale um, uh, and with the highest process efficiency. So also there, um, again, we talk about higher demand. We talk about, okay, we need to add more ingredients where we can get from when is the right production slot where we can um, really increase the demand and also uh, do the mixing of the different kind of ingredients accordingly to achieve the same quality level we had um, uh, with the regular amount of ice cream. Um, and then we can go through all these process steps here also in a digital way and can very easily see um, how SAP and the partner solution could help to manage this at scale. And at the end, to deliver also the right quality um, to our customers. 
<clears throat> yesterday, uh, uh, the Industry 4.0 group presented on the showcase you have in, in, in Waldorf. And one of the tracks is process manufacturing, obviously, which is which is what you're talking about here. So all the robotics and all the yes. That they and have exactly. It. Even like I also invite everybody who's able to come to Waldorf in our pop-up factory. Um, we really did the same kind of setup in a real physical environment um in our pop-up factory. And also we focus on building what we had um, we need in uh, Orlando now, but also in Barcelona and in Sao Paulo with the ice cream production line, which was a real machinery. Um, uh, we really fill in all the ingredients. We did a production and we have this transactional data now also in the system that like also our customers can see, okay, it's working and uh, it's not just a showcase, it's, it's real. Um, uh, and we also want to use this and leverage way more in, in a close collaboration with standard development and also the partner organization um, that we can co-innovate based on this real environment. And, and we also want to rebuild the, the ice cream production line um, uh, in, in North America as well as in Latin America and want to make this part of the experience centers there. So we need there is a chance to consume our ice cream as soon as we build the setup um, uh, on on the physical environment in our experience center. So it's not only physical. So we also intend to build this or rebuild this in our experience centers in a physical way. And again, it's a good example. Before we come to deliver, I think I, I maybe quickly want to jump or like go back on this topic. Um, having this, Vinny, it's, a, it's unique. It's something we also see like partners coming proactive, startups coming proactive, but also customers coming proactively saying, okay, show me the latest greatest. Maybe I have an idea about a, an innovation process improvement. We see day in, day out in our business. Can we implement it here first to check if it's working, if we need another integration, maybe to an SAP S4 system or whatever. And, and we can do this in a, I would say, prototype approach and then also ship it at scale to our customers. And that's also a, a big opportunity we, we see here, definitely. But talked about a make process. At the end, um, delivery is as important as the making. So um, a best make process, if you deliver, uh, if you ship the right quality, um, it's nothing worse is that at the end um, uh, on the delivery, on the warehousing, um, we cannot control the quality. We cannot ship in time because maybe we are low in um, uh, warehouse management workers or like human workers. So we also need to see how we can automize this at scale, how we can manage uh, um, the stock um, accordingly, taking maybe computer vision technology, scanning the shelves, seeing, okay, where we are low in stock, combining it also with the demand signals, the same kind of data we use for like um, improved um, uh, production um, that we really then see, okay, what do we need to have in stock, what we need to have maybe ship first, or um, if we have maybe too much in stock and we need to empty the shelf because there are maybe new production line coming in, that we connect it then to the later step um, to the retail or the uh, consumption area in the consumer area to maybe do promotional pricing um, uh, on uh, on uh, products we see okay there is not such a high high demand and we may, maybe need to get it out of the um, warehouse to have a place for new um, goods or maybe for the next season stuff and and this is the same thing again I come always back in, and that's the nice thing also in this digital showcase we need. We always repeat, it's the same kind of for people who want to experience this. It's the same kind of click through user experience in the digital showcase uh, in every process step. And you see also then always the complexity, um, uh, the value SAP's portfolio can bring in. So like having also the logistic business network so we can manage, okay, maybe we need to find a new logistic um, uh, or wholesale distribution company who has maybe some space available to ship it on time as like our um, uh, um, preferred logistic company is not available. We, we can maybe manage and also optimize delivery 
and and shipment um, routes um, uh, taking also data from our partners also like google maps etc um, and and do this all way more automated and i mean also for the warehouse manager everything for sure also available um, in uh, uh, mobile apps that we can really manage this um, uh, from everywhere um, uh, in every point in time and yes as said delivery i think it's it's fast forward. It's it's yes, it's complex. It's important. It's, it's also important to reduce carbon footprint. But we also see that more and more it's going into um, uh, full automation. Um, as this is really a process. I mean, with the new edge technology, you can manage very well um, uh, with computer vision technology or sensor technology. And at the end, it's always like in in farming, Vinny. It's connecting the event um, uh, via event repository and then triggering the backend process in an SAP system. So um, it's just like we take edge data and optimize the core processes. This is the whole cold chain logistics, kind of like the vaccine logistics, right? Uh, especially for ice cream. Yep. I mean, as ice cream as important for vaccine. Yeah, we saw it like uh, during COVID. Um, it's, more, uh, you also... it's, more, it's more important if you're a young young person. <laughs> uh, no, look, I mean, <laughs> and, and that's a very inter interesting point. Like, um, uh, and a good hook to jump now to the consume area because this actually happens um, uh, during Sapphire in Orlando, uh, where we really proven that the showcase is is a real one. So what we saw, we had the control of the ice cream in the in the warehouse behind the, the, the retail, I would say the retailer's warehouse. And then we took it and packaged it into the um, uh, freezers in the retail, in the virtual or in the physical retail store at Sapphire. And in some point of time when there was high traffic after, um, after the keynotes, a lot of people came in and uh, some of them ordered it and get their personalized ice cream, but some of them just walked to the freezer and opened the freezer and like searched for a different kind of um, sorting and, 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 and a taste. And then they took it and they keep the freezer open. And in some point of time, the freezer was not able to cool the ice cream down again. And what we had we had a very, um, uh, we have a very good partner it's, uh, from Switzerland, a startup, and they produce like um, uh, sensors measuring core temperature um, of the ingredients in the in the freezer. And like every two minutes, they send us the core temperature of the ice cream. And you saw really, I mean, with a, a, a kind of latency that in some point of time, the ice cream was over the critical threshold to ship it. So we need to put all the ice cream out and throw it away and, and refill it with new and fresh ice cream to keep the cold chain, cold chain compliance. And I mean, that is what it's all about. Um, uh, create also a better user experience because normally you, I mean, without the sensors, yes, we would have known, but after maybe some people or customers coming back and saying, okay, I cannot take this ice cream, it's just melting away. And maybe I take a, a health risk um, in, in uh, consuming it. So we, we had an early, um, uh, I would say, um, risk alert in our system that, it, that the threshold, like the, the temperature is over the threshold and we need to put it out. And this is also what we showed as we thought about, okay, let's have this as a showcase that we always control the core temperature. But in this moment, we really used it live in Orlando on the showcase to put uh, like all the ice cream out. And I don't know if we have it here, but can go really deep also on .com and having exactly the same case, how this works also for retailers or but also for consumer good products companies to really um, uh, show all the, um, the, the complete cold chain of the specific product and control it and reduce the manual process um, uh, to really do the things. Um, on top of this- no, I can, I can, I can Schneider. Give me a tour of the uh, retail experience center in Waldorf. So that's another. Yeah, you saw all, it. All yeah. the cameras and all the scanners and the the exactly completely yeah. automated retail store. And 
honestly, like, by the way, th this is the case. This is how we explained it. Also what I just explained, you can also see it there. So you see the freezer, you see the core temperature, you see the adjustment. Okay, maybe the core temperature is above and then you need to get an early alert what happened. Um, uh, so, and you can really pick every piece which is in the freezer. So it's, it's honestly, it's amazing what you already can do by digitizing also your store. And again, I mean, all the other um, topics coming on top, like thinking, knowing the customer coming in the store, um, uh, offering already maybe the right products to the customer, do the right receipt uh, proposal on, on the digital store, but also then guide them, guide them through the store, what to buy or give a promotional pricing, which is then connected um, uh, to the checkout system in the store. Um, based on the consumer buying behavior. And there are so much things um, also beyond this. And, and Vinny, you mentioned at the beginning when we started the conversation, also having Sven um, from industry stride, getting more and more the information from the customers about blurring industries and new business scenarios, like think about utilities providers, think about oil, gas, energy. They also want great retail experience for people charging their cars and having time. So they also need to connect it somewhere to this data in the process. Um, so this is really, I would say, um, uh, yeah, unique. Um, I, I think only SAP with this broad portfolio also connected to third party solutions, um, definitely, but but also using the, the partner ecosystem. But I think that's at the end the differentiator um, for the businesses to really also make businesses more sustainable um, in the whole supply chain and not only maybe for one specific it's thing. System. It's opening the customer eyes to the art of the possible, right? And they walk through all these, they go, I can use this, I can use this, I hadn't thought of this. So I do have a question. I have a burning question. So you had this in the show floor in Orlando, then in I... Barcelona, then in Bo and then in uh, Rio, Rio, not Rio, Sao Paulo, right? Yes. So how difficult is it to move all this around? We had we had three ice cream machines, so uh, we had uh, for each country we had uh, uh, ice cream production line, um, uh, and everything like most of the stuff was also rented uh, except of the farm robots which are owned by us and um, uh, the ice cream production line in Sao Paulo we bought um, uh, from from the company who offers these also to huge consumer co products companies to produce ice cream. So we bought this one and we want to, as I said at the beginning, we want to rebuild this or build this up in an experience center and make it like run um, all the time and, and also then give the possibility to customers, partners um, uh, to, to see it live in action. Um, uh, most of the other stuff, I mean, from sure screen freezers, we also rent it. Um, but it took time. I mean, we, we had like not so much time for planning everything accordingly. We had like three months um, uh, then also setting up the system, setting up the, the data flow, setting up in the, I would say, in uh, convention centers, getting the energy, getting the watering, getting um, all the stuff in place. It was complex. It was uh, day in and day out work. Uh, but I think it turned um, uh, out really well and I mean honestly the feedback was amazing and also the numbers like with also after like the post event contacts we had and also um, now workshops with customers visiting this um, it's amazing and and also when you see um, especially Unilever where we also talk big time but also Nestle um, uh, they really sometimes just seeing this process in very visual, very physically, very like compressed, um, really shows them the complexity they need to solve and where they also sometimes didn't thought about, oh yes, maybe that's a good topic that we also have this data somewhere uh, reflected in the ERP system or we need to align maybe with our supplier to do maybe ESG reporting or something like this accordingly um because uh, otherwise um uh, it's it's getting hard and again i think the huge uh, the unique opportunity we create always with showcase is like compressing it take easy examples for our customers which they can apply to their business 
because they know it also from a daily uh, consumption like ice cream um, uh, and then really translate it to their use cases and what we can do there. I think um, uh, this concept plays out well. And this is also why we said, okay, we need to have also this digital experience in place that we always offer the customer um, uh, to also see the latest and greatest, to see the next extension, new partner solutions and all those things. Andre, this is wonderful. Thank you so much for giving me a detailed walkthrough. Happy. I appreciate that you took the time that I that I'm able to walk through. So um, yes, likewise. Thank well, you. I want, for having... I want you to come back next year. You'll probably have a uh, utility and and gas station version. So come back, come back, come back every few months and, and give me a if new. You can you can come to Waldorf, Vinny. We will have the mobility utility case. I assume maybe in two months from now, live in the experience center at Waldorf. So. Uh, but we are already building it. Next year, Sapphire, I have something special in my mind, but let's see. We are working on it. Um, uh, but yeah, the challenge is on. The challenge is on, Vinny. I, I try. If you want to give my audience a sneak preview and test it out, happy to allow you that. It would be awesome. I mean, getting feedback from, from your audience and also from multiple also external uh, viewers, I mean, would really appreciate to take this opportunity and um, yeah, let's stay in contact and, and try to maybe get some feedback early stage um, uh, to not going on the, the wrong way, I would say. Thank you.